my friends welcome back to my channel and if you are um brand new to the channel then um i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad you're all here um so i'm gonna do something a little bit different today i was getting ready to um do a little craft project and i thought hey why don't I film it? Because there might be some people out there who would be interested. So um, that is what I'm going to do. So um, I'll start by showing you what I'm making and why I'm making them and all of that fun stuff. Um, so uh, it all started, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little backstory. It all started when I realized that the typical um, uh, palette, um, tin palette that um, most watercolorists um, use to hold their paints, they're set up kind of like this, where they're all um, quite close together and um, in these cute little tin palettes. But the issue for me is the quite close together and the not being easy, um, especially if they're wet, um, to get them in and out of here. So my solution to that problem was for me to make my own custom um, paint palettes. And um, if you guys um, know my channel, my channel, <laughs> you will recognize um, immediately, I think, what these are. These are the tins from my colored pencil sets. So um, basically, what I felt was lacking, what I felt that I needed in a, um, in a tin that held my paints, was something that I could easily um, take out and put back in again. And something that when I was, if I was dipping into this, um, they wouldn't be so close together that they would make a big mess. Because I don't like it when paints contaminate each other and all of that stuff. So um, the ideal setup for me has turned out to be... Um, a mixing palette that looks like this. This is actually a baking pan that I got on Amazon. And I did it because I had tried um, some other artists, um, they call them butcher, I think they're, I think they're called butcher palettes or butcher pan palettes or something like that. But the ones that are made for artists, and I mean every single one that I looked at, were made so poorly um, where it, where the, the metal that gets kind of turned over was all broke, you know, uneven. Um, some of the porcelain was chipping in certain areas. They just looked like they were really poorly made. And so when I went on to Amazon into the baking uh, or the cooking section, I found this pan for literally a few dollars more than what the artist's palette um, uh, pieces were. So this is what I went with, and I absolutely love it. Um, a little tip, maybe some of you are aware, maybe you aren't. Um, I did come through here and take some toothpaste and rubbed the whole thing on the inside with some toothpaste. And that helped to keep the, I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but it improved upon um, that it helped to keep the paint from getting all um, beating up and doing weird things. It keeps the paint in a nice, even smooth thing. And if you like using palettes like this, um, you can do that in these kind of palettes too, and it will give you a better mixing surface. So the reason that I wanted a tin like this, as opposed to like a, a you know, porcelain palette or just a, or even just a, like a plate, you know, a, a, a ceramic plate or anything like that, was because I wanted something that I could put my um, pans on and it would stick. So the whole purpose of this is that 
I have my little swatch cards here, which I absolutely adore. I love, love, love having them be on separate um, rings because when I go to choose my colors for whatever project it is that I'm working on, I can pull out just the colors for the color palette that I'm planning on using. I'm just gonna pull some random ones out here. Um, and then, so now instead of these colors being all mixed in with all the other colors that are part of my swatch for, for whatever set that I'm using, I can have only these colors pulled out and look at them together and decide, you know, that yes, these are the colors that I wanna use, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually have a, um, a metal note board. Um, uh, it's linked in my everything else um, section in my Amazon store. Um, and I use these, you know, you guys have seen me use it and maybe you didn't know that I was using it. Um, it usually goes when I'm, when I'm um, drawing or coloring or doing anything up on an angle, it goes behind my cutting mat and these little magnets um, hold my papers. You've seen me do that. Well, now they hold my cards um, that I'm using for my different paint projects. Anyway, that was a long story <laughs> to get to why I needed to, to make these. So that's why, because I wanted something that would hold um, the paints that I have in any given set um, and I wanted to be able to um, have them be neat, but I can still come in and just pull out the ones that I want and stick them in my in my mixing tray and use them that way. And it's it stays so much neater. I although I love uh, looking at um, on YouTube at the artists who have a palette that is just a mess. <laughs> It would drive me crazy. I can't do it. So this way, everything stays neat. The mess stays in here. It's easily cleaned up when I'm finished. Um, and I don't really feel like I'm wasting anything when I clean this out because really the only thing that's in here is a lot of water and a, a, you know, and a little bit of paint because the paint is all in the pans this way. So anyway, so... Um, this is one that I made for my collection of paints that I have um, collected so far. These are uh, my core, my Winsor Newton, and my Daniel Smith paints. And, um, and I took my own artwork, which I don't even know if I posted this online. By the time this video comes out, I may not have even posted this online yet. So that's my own artwork, but it's a print. It's a, I printed it on the computer. <clears throat> and then this is another one, also my artwork, also printed from the computer. And these are all of my super granulating paints, which I'm not going to lie. I know that there's some people that think that they're gimmicky and all of that stuff. Don't care, don't care, don't care. That color um, <laughs> palette makes my little heart go pitter-patter. And I have more coming. And... Um, by the way, I think I'm going to do a swatching of um, the new ones that I have, which are all of Masha's paints. And I will tell you a little secret. I like them 10 times as much as I like the Schmincke Super Granulators. Masha's paints are amazing. So I will, um, I have about 20 of them. So I will do a little swatching video with those. Um, Okay, so there's two, there's, uh, those are my palettes that I have so far. And I am ready to do another one because I'm going to need a second one for my super granulators. So, this is what I did. I took, this is an Arteza tin, and I spray painted it with um, Krylon uh, satin finish. Um, you don't need semi-gloss. That's probably way too glossy. Satin finish. And I didn't worry about c covering the very center of it. I concentrated on the outside because um, this is going to get covered up. 
you can you can spray paint the back i was running out of paint uh spray paint so i didn't bother spray painting the back you could put felt on the bottom you know you, there's so many things that you can do that would um I'm trying to make it so it's not too like obnoxious <laughs> anyway um okay so what i did was i photographed um my artwork and um i for these for this purpose i just use crappy um sorry hobby lobby i just use <laughs> master's touch um watercolor paper because um, every other week it's 50% off, which means that this pad was only $6. And um, it's actually got a really nice texture for doing what I'm doing. I didn't like it for painting on. Um, I have uh, I have since realized that um, for me personally, cotton paper is 100% the only thing that I will do paintings on now. Um, but this kind of paper is good for small swatches and, you know, testing things, testing colors and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I use this for. So uh, if you're going to do this, you have a couple of options. I mean, you could totally go to the store or your stash um, and pull out a piece of scrapbook paper. And you could do the same thing with a piece of scrapbook paper where you don't even have to... Um, you know, use a printer. Um, the thinner the paper, the more, um, the more, the, the more careful, the, yeah, the more careful you'll have to be <laughs> when you put, when you glue it on because it's thin and, you know, the thin papers tend to buckle. Um, the nice thing is the watercolor paper does not buckle at all when I go to put it on here. So, um, what I did was I measured the distance of my box and um, when I did my design and I did this in, um, oh, what's the name of the program? Pixelmator. Um, Pixelmator, Photoshop Elements, any program where you can layer. Um, so my photograph went down first and then I layered um, this on top. If you don't have a way to do that, you could simply print your photograph, um, the so you know, a little bit bigger than the size of your tin. Um, and then, you know, maybe you have some scrapbook stickers or something like that that have a, that, that looks similar to this that you could just stick on top. Um, or you don't have to worry about it at all. You could just do a pretty picture and leave it alone. But anyway, this is what I did. So, um, I cut my 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper down to an 8.5 by 11, um, and I printed the image. Now, keep in mind that if your image is made to fit the size of your box, and you print it, chances are it's going to print a teeny little bit smaller than what you wanted it to, because printers shrink down everything by like a quarter of an inch all the way around for that stupid white border that they put on there. So um, to get around that, I, uh, in my settings, can set it to print borderless. You could also just size your image a little bit bigger, like a half inch bigger, so it's a quarter inch on each side, um, bigger than the, what you actually want it to be. So now we sp we sprayed our tin, and I haven't looked. I should have checked to see if you can get um, empty tin boxes that size. I meant to do that before I started filming, and I didn't. So if you can, I will link those. If I find some somewhere, I'll link those in the description box of the video. Whoops, cut that one just. Cut that one a little bit off, so that could be a problem. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to cut off all of this white. That's weird. Okay, so I... Oh, it's not going to be a problem. I like my image to be a little bit smaller than the... Um, 
than the tin so that there's just like a an eighth of an inch maybe all the way around so I'm going to take off a little bit on all the sides here because I got it just a little bit too big this one I think I'll leave the top alone and take a little bit more off of the bottom start there to see. So it's still, like right now, it's pretty much going edge to edge, and I actually still want it a teeny little bit smaller. So better to do it a little bit at a time, because God knows... <laughs> I, you know, you don't want to have to, even though it's not super expensive paper, you still don't want to have to re reprint because you've made it too small. These are really so easy to make. And the other thing that I love about them, as opposed to all of those tins that people have, all the different boxes that they have of their watercolors and all of that, if I put these away on the shelf, they all just stack so nicely <laughs> that, um, and I really like that. And I, you know, I kind of like the fact that I'm using my own artwork um, on the covers of these. It's just, it's just fun and kind of cool. So, all right. So I am happy with that. So now I'm going to... Am I happy with that? This might be a little... Let's see. I'm good on the edges. I'm kind of feeling like top to bottom is still a little bit wide. Sorry, but this is how it goes. This is what you kind of have to do. Otherwise, Again, if you cut too much off in the beginning, then you'll, then you'll be bummed. Um, that that Fisker's um, cutting tool, whatever you want to call it, there we go, that's better. Um, it's different now, that's an old model, but um, that's probably in my top 10 best purchases I have ever made. <laughs> I use that thing all the time. All right, so here's kind of the edge of the tin, and we're coming in about a quarter of an inch. Sorry, probably about an eighth of an inch. Anyway, the distance that's showing. So I'm just going to go around, like there's the corner, so I'm going to come in a little bit. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, obviously, we, we want it to look as nice as possible. This still feels... This is still too high up on the... Well, I'm going to leave it. If I have to trim it more later, I will. Let's get this... So that's like the edge. Now, if you're going to go um, edge to edge, meaning that you're not going to leave any um, paper showing, you're just going to go all the way edge to edge. You could just take your box, flip it upside down, and trace around um, whatever your paper is that you're using. Come on now, what's the problem? have a corner punch but it's not the right it doesn't give the right uh, curve oh, I can barely see how 
that looks. I think that works for me. All right. So, time to break out the trusty Mod Podge. <clears throat> and I always use matte. If you don't have Mod Podge, just use um, white glue thinned down a little bit. And for this, instead of putting it on the paper, I'm actually going to put it right on the top of the tin. And I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about, I mean, I want it to be, you know, a little bit further out than the, than the paper. So you could just go right to the edge because we're going to, we can wipe off whatever doesn't, whatever shows that we don't want showing. Make sure you put your brush in water. Don't leave it sitting out or you'll wind up with a worthless brush. Oh, the glue all dried. Not that I've ever done that before. Okay. So now we're going to take our watercolor paper. I really should have erased that corner a little bit. And because it's on the um, the instead of being on the paper because I put it on the um, uh, the tin itself, um, it seems that you could have a little bit more time to move it around to, to position it to where you're happy with the positioning. Now, you don't want to get, like I just did, you don't want to get water on, yeah, like I just did. You don't want to get water on the... Um, paper, at least if it's been through the printer, because it will, um, you know, kind of bleed your, yeah, kind of like I just did there with that stripe of, <laughs> of wet. Hopefully when it dries, it will, it will go away. We'll see. And then you just really want to make sure that you work those um, edges Make sure that they're really down, and um, and if you do use water on the edges where your glue is, just be careful. Okay, sometimes I will turn it. Um, because when you push down in the center, um, there is some give, but if you flip it upside down and you push down the center of the lid, um, there's no give, so you get a little bit better. Um, all right, now there's just something, I don't know what it is, but the feel of the watercolor paper, at least, at least the watercolor paper that I'm using, um, on the box, just really feel, it just really feels good. Um, yeah, so, all right, um, we're going to let that dry. Now, what I would do, um, next, which I don't have to do for you in the, in the camera, but I would take, um, I would take this, I would turn it upside down on another piece of watercolor paper, trace around it, and that's going to get you really close to the inner dimension here for your swatch chart. Um, and I like to have, I mean, obviously I have the swatch charts, you know, that I showed you, the, the separating ones. These, these. Um, but I also always do one on the inside because, you know, that's, it just, it helps me find the paint, basically. And sometimes it's fun just, just to see them all together. Um, okay, so 
there's that. I mean, look how quick and easy that was to do. Um, and now, maybe I should let it dry for just a little while longer. Now I will, um, a little disclaimer about like how long things take to dry and all of that stuff. I am learning as time goes on that um, everybody's climate is a little bit different in how, you know, things work. So here in um, the dry desert of Arizona, things dry very, very quickly. Um, my friends in Florida, um, everything takes a gazillion years to dry where she is because of all of the humidity. So um, I'm not sure how long it will take, but you do want to let it dry completely. And then, um, then um, this is where things differ a little bit. Now you have a couple of options. You can... After this is completely dry, you can spray this with like um, uh, Krylon. I really like Krylon products. They make really nice artist um, quality, non-yellowing, um, really good stuff. Um, so you could spray it with like Krylon. I really like Kamar varnish. Um, it's um, the sheen for Kamar varnish is just this wonderful, subtle sheen. It's not super shiny. Um, uh, you could also use just a, um, just a satin, just a satin spray finish. But, um, I had seen some YouTube videos where, um, and I was thrilled to discover this, that there is a product, um, cord called Dorland's Wax Medium that is made to put onto watercolors. And what it, um, what it does is it seals the watercolor so you don't have to put it behind glass if you don't want to, which um, in certain rooms of my house, that is an awesome thing because one of the things that I loved about when I was doing the acrylics was that the pieces didn't have to go behind glass because if you guys know, glass puts off a reflection unless you buy really expensive non-reflective glass. Um, so I was very excited to discover Dorland's wax medium for, um, wa for watercolors. Um, you could mount your watercolor to a board and then seal it with wax and it, um, it would, that, yeah, that's just awesome. Okay, so that being said, um, I had not purchased any yet. <laughs> and I was, um, and I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. So it's, it's wax. Okay, so it's wax and resin. Um, I don't think there's any resin in this, but this is um, some of the wax that I used when I was doing furniture, when I was doing um, chalk painted furniture. Um, and then you finish it, you can either finish it with a clear coat, which I did more often than that, but I did have some of this clear wax. And I thought, gee, I wonder what would happen um, if I used this wax, because obviously this is not my original, this is just a this is just printed out on my computer. So what do I have to lose? So I tried it and it worked fantastic. So inkjet printers, when you put water, like if I were, if I was to brush Mod Podge on top of this, I would completely destroy the artwork. The water, um, the water in the glue would um, completely smear my inkjet printer, um, ink all over the place and totally ruin it. Um, so you either want to spray your, um, your, your sealer on, or you can use this wax. And because the wax is not water-based, it doesn't touch the water-based water ink in the, you know, printed on the paper. So I just put some of this on a rag and rub it on just like I would do on a piece of furniture. And it, um, it's, it does, I mean, it doesn't even feel, I, I don't know. It soaks into the paper. It, um, it, 
it doesn't even feel like I put, it doesn't feel yucky like I put wax on top of it. Um, now I can't, again, I'm not gonna swear to how it's gonna feel in, um, in your climate, but um, this, this stuff is used all over the place. So I can't imagine that it would be, maybe it would need a teeny little bit more drying time or curing time in high um, humidity climates, but literally that is it. And the magic test. Let's just do it on one though that's not super duper brand new and fresh. So the magic test is the water just just beads up. I don't know if you could I don't know if you can see that, but the water just beads up and it just wipes off. So it's a protective finish. Um, if it gets splattered with water or, or probably paint, probably anything, um, it will just wipe off because it's got that nice wax uh, sealer on it. So that <laughs> is how I make my, that's how I make my, my, uh, my palettes to hold my paint. And, um, it this it just works for me. It works much better for me because I don't I don't go traveling. I don't take my um I don't take my paints with me places, so I don't need to have a a travel palette. I'm a I'm a studio painter only, so they work they work really well for me. So um that's it, boy. That see we did that in probably 15 minutes. So I am going to do some checking to see if um, tins, big tins like this are available in case you are not a colored pencil um, person and you don't have any of these awesome tins laying around yourself. And I will link that in the description um, below. So there you go. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful and maybe sparked some ideas for you to use for your own uh, your own stuff and uh yeah I might uh I might just do this watching video next I know I need to get to um another um tutorial of some kind soon and I will so <laughs> until then take care of yourselves take care of each other loved you all bye